Hong Kong was once proud of its free media, but the central government in Beijing has dismantled most pro-democracy media, leaving hundreds of journalists without work, among them Chris and Jackie. I'm seizing my time to report. There are journalists still hanging on and persevering. Hong Kong was once a colony of the British Empire. In 1997, it was handed back over to China, against the promise that Hong Kong would retain its rights and freedoms for 50 years. But only halfway through, Beijing's grip is tightening. Where does that leave pro-democracy journalists? And can they find ways out? Why, 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 why testing? Jackie is looking to interview passers-by for a report for the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square incident in 1989, when China's communist rulers violently crushed protests. Hello, can I ask you a few questions? I'll show you some news pictures, and you tell me whether you recognize them. Jackie has images of the massacre and from Hong Kong's commemoration of the killed students. Do you know what this is? Victoria Park. Mm. But not long after he starts, the student's teacher intervenes. Mm. Okay. Excuse me, I'm their teacher. What are you doing? Okay. An interview. Sorry, you should speak to the school instead. We are also asked to stop filming. The teacher said that such interviews could be problematic for the school. There's less and less wriggle room for reporting, not only because of the authorities, but because people are scared. There's a white terror. It's become harder to find someone willing to speak up. For several months now, Jackie has been running a one-man news platform as an independent journalist. He and a former colleague, who now also works independently, created this office in their shared flat. Jackie used to work for the award-winning media outlet Citizen News, but following political pressure, it closed. Journalism has always been a low-paying job in Hong Kong, but Jackie is earning even less now. Still, he keeps publishing his reports for free, hoping they reach as many people as possible. Very few of the remaining local mainstream media are doing in-depth reports about Tiananmen, even though the annual commemoration was always important in Hong Kong. This self-censorship leads to blank pages in collective awareness. I hope my work can help fill those gaps. Stay and keep going, or quit and leave? This is a choice many journalists in Hong Kong are facing. Chris is trying to find a third route. He's starting a bookstore together with four other former journalists, all from media outlets which have closed. Everything I'm working on is my first try, from woodwork to painting to decorating. We're doing it all ourselves, with the help of many other former colleagues. Building bookshelves is proving a particular challenge. Although what's even harder is finding uncensored books. Chris often goes to a wholesaler who sources goods from Taiwan. Other than local publishers, the warehouse is one of the main places he has found stock. We want our shop to be a journalism bookstore. And as a former reporter, I'm naturally also interested in books related to social issues and current topics. Many books have already been banned or removed from public libraries and schools, and book fairs have also become wary. Chris doesn't believe in such self-imposed censorship. We won't remove books. That's the job of the authorities. As long as a book can be legally imported into Hong Kong, there shouldn't be a problem. In the Reporters Without Borders Press Freedom Index, Hong Kong plummeted from the 80th to the 148th place in just one year. 
The drop began after Apple Daily, the most important voice of the opposition, had to shut down. Its top-level employees had been detained under the new national security law imposed by Beijing. Not long after, the largest pro-democracy online outlet, Stan News, saw their top editors arrested under a sedition charge. It, too, had to close. Many outlets followed suit out of fear. Hundreds of journalists found themselves out of work. Those charged could face years in prison. Jackie has kept on reporting, and people are watching his video on the Tiananmen massacre anniversary on his platform. But one user comment has Jackie worried. The user said he'd report the video to the National Security Police. Regardless of whether this happens or whether it's an empty threat, this stresses me and makes me feel threatened. Because I have to bear all the consequences alone, without the cover of a media outlet. Nowadays in Hong Kong, journalists are surrounded by red lines. There are no more grey areas. That's also why I choose to work alone, so I won't implicate others. <laughs> It's been an exhausting year. Whenever a journalist was arrested in recent months, I went to film it. That's my way of healing my sense of powerlessness. Over the past year, dozens of small new media platforms covering various topics have been launched by former journalists. Most, however, decided to quit the press industry. So, after a decade-long career as a journalist, it's the first day of Chris's new business, a bookstore dedicated to journalism. This is our first member. Beyond books, there's also a small improvised museum to remind of freer days. Memorable headlines and important front pages, many from media which had to close. This is a press kit of the Hong Kong handover ceremony, one of the pieces donated by senior journalists. We left our jobs as reporters, but we took that step reluctantly. In our hearts, we're still with the industry. And we hope to promote journalistic values in another way with this bookstore. Improving media literacy means people will not be deceived by what is being run on the news now. They named their bookstore Have a Nice Stay. On the very first day, the little shop is bustling with current and former journalists. Many haven't seen each other for a long time. Some have been under arrest. Several objects remind them of the good old days, like this desk, which comes from a now-closed newsroom. On his arm, Chris has a tattoo of the date when Stand News had to close. The most heartbreaking moment for me was when a colleague I know well was arrested right in front of me. Things that used to be completely normal can now land you in jail. It's systematically destroying the diversity of our press. It makes me pessimistic, as there seems to be no room for debate anymore. Chris had seen his former job as a lifelong calling. He's now changed course, but he's holding on to his values. It's about the pursuit of truth. Whoever carries this core value could be a journalist, even if he or she is not actually working in the field. It's about conviction. Deep down in my heart, I think I'm still a journalist. June 4th, the anniversary of the 1989 Tiananmen massacre. Usually, the commemoration was held in this park, Today, it's been blocked off. Leave now, or you will be charged. Security authorities in all of China are on alert today. In past years, thousands gathered here. I'm not expecting a lot of demonstrators this time. Most important activists have been arrested anyway. Most important activists have been arrested anyway. 
On the street, Jackie meets a former Stan News journalist, who is now also working independently. Where will your video appear? I have a YouTube channel. I hope someday it'll be self-financing. It's hard. My page is bringing in about the same as a fresh graduate level income. But at least I can work with a clear conscience. Just some blocks away, a few brave activists are protesting out in the open. All journalists back off. Not covering this isn't an option for me. Then I may as well stop reporting. It's important for the government to know that we're still watching. But especially, independent journalists are at risk. Free speech and free media need people to speak up. If we don't try to keep going, if we fall silent voluntarily, we'll have lost. When Jackie first started working as a journalist, he was taught that this was the best place to photograph the vigil. Today, there's no one. Back then, he would never have guessed he would be working under such conditions. Independent journalists are having to fill the gaps. But that only works one part at a time, which makes it harder for the public. They have to put the fragmented information together to see the big picture. We journalists have to reinvent ourselves in spite of the risks. But there are ideas and courage. I see that everywhere. Most journalists expect authorities will impose even stricter regulations. Nonetheless, Jackie says that for now, giving up isn't an option for him. <laughs>